Welcome to MB Shoe Dock, where we explore the world of quality dress shoes for men. We will cover the art of patina and shine, learn to care for our shoes, review the brands that you love, and introduce brands that you've never heard of. Here we've got a pair of Allen Edmonds. This is the Marlowe wingtip. is in a walnut color. We're going to be stripping these and doing a custom dye patina on them. Start by taking out the laces. Our goal with this pair is to do an olive green patina. Should be something kind of fun and exciting, a little bit different. Once the laces are removed, Get some snug fitting shoe trees here. All right, now we're ready to remove the factory finish using acetone. Acetone is not uh, brand specific. I get this just straight from Lowe's or Home Depot. cotton ball once the cotton ball is pretty saturated like this it's not really going to take up any more coloration so I usually flip it over out of it before I toss it and go to the next one. As you can see here, this shoe has been pretty well stripped. You can see how much lighter and duller the finish is compared to this one. So we'll get this guy stripped to match and then we'll get to the fun part, adding some color back to the shoes. All right, we did some more stripping of the shoes. Gonna start with some Fibings yellow. So again, we're going for kind of an olive green patina here. And so I'm gonna use yellow as my base. And a lot of times I like to start at either the toe or the heel. with the color just to see how it's going to look because those are areas that a lot of times you can burnish or darken later so if the color's not looking exactly the way you want you know not a big deal I would not start you know, on the vamp or the middle of the shoe there yeah, I think this is going to look fine And this little area, notice this here, looks like there was a, maybe a deep gouge in the toe. And it looks like it's been repaired with some sort of a filler. Now I'll be honest, I have not actually run into that on a dye job. So I'm not sure how that's going to take the dye in that area. It'll be interesting. I may have to use a different filler or like I said, kind of burnish the toe make it a little bit darker on purpose to cover that up. So we will see what happens with that. And this is looking darker after I put the dye on. It's just because it's getting the leather wet. Uh, once it dries, it'll be a fair amount lighter than that. And it's already, the shoe's already a, a fairly light color. Just has a little bit more of an orangey tone. And because I'm going for that olive color, I think the yellow will be a slightly easier base to use. I probably could have gone just green right over top of it and that would have worked. 
but I still think yellow is going to be an easier starting point. All right, so I have custom mixed an olive green with some yellow, some tan, and some green from fivings. Again, with something like this, I'm going to start on the toe heel and see how this, see how it takes the color. It's interesting, it looks much more green here, and when I put it on the shoe, it really doesn't come out all that green. pretty happy with some of the tones I'm getting here with the olive green but wanting to have it fade kind of more into a brown towards the toe probably towards the top of the shoe too so I'm going to use Fibing's light brown again I like to just shake up the bottle and whatever's in the cap just use that so it keeps the brush pretty dry don't want it oversaturated. see it here how that creates kind of a soft fade from brown into the yellow for the olive green yeah so liking the way that looks I'm gonna do a little bit more of that I'll do that on the heel as well maybe up towards the top of the eyelets adding just a little bit more accent to the broguing, going a little bit stronger with the green. wasn't completely satisfied with the color so this one I've added a little bit more burnishing through here with a slightly different mix of color if you can see the difference here has been added a little bit extra burnish this one has has not and so it's more so along the broguing darkened up there with a little bit more of a, a fade to it so 
This one again has been touched up again. This one has not, so I'm going to set that one aside. This was a custom mix of color, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of black, and some of the same green that I was using on it. And so I went along the broguing with it. So I think I'm finally satisfied with the color on these. So I added a little bit more burnishing with black. And so now I'm going to recondition them with the Big Four. Before I apply the wax, I'm going to use a little bit of this Saphir. This is a cream to kind of fill in little scuffs. And this is actually uh, was a gift from Steve at Beto's Leatherworks. So thank you so much, uh, Steve, for this. I appreciate that. So we're going to use this. See if we can fill in these little, little scuffs here. So this cream worked pretty well filling in the scuff marks and I think uh, wax is going to take care of filling in the rest. So I'm going to start with Saphir. This is black. Now I'm going to use this black, it's going to help kind of darken the toe, blend the color a little bit, fill in the scuff marks a little bit, and then I'm going to switch to mirror gloss to add the real high shine, and possibly we'll switch back to this black again at the end. I've switched over to using the Saphir Mirror Gloss. Already getting a, a pretty decent shine here on these just from the black polish and I feel like the scuff marks are really filled in quite well. I mean, if you hold up the shoe I can look and see them but I think when the shoe is worn I don't think anyone's going to see those. So 
I'm going to continue with uh, that mirror gloss if we can get a little bit more high shine on these. But really happy with how this is coming along here. I hope you enjoyed this custom patina project. I encourage you to like the videos, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and share.